Your Storm Team 2 forecast first. We've seen quite a few showers and thunderstorms scattered across the region throughout the day today. And as we look out here from News 2, you can see one of those rain showers off in the distance just past the Ravenel Bridge. And that air temperature out the door at 81 right now. We are seeing some rain cooled temperatures because it was another very hot 90 degree day for many. Showers and thunderstorms are continuing to push across the low country, moving a little bit more upstate. And that chance is going to be back for tomorrow and heading into the new week as well. I'll be breaking that down in the Low Country's only 10 day outlook. Now, count on two, live and local in the Low Country. This is News 2 at 6. A local nurse pulling double duty as a photographer, putting those extra skills to use for a special cause. Plus, a week of celebration begins honoring the late congressman and civil rights icon, John Lewis. Good Saturday evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Taylor Murray. The COVID-19 numbers continue to rise in our state, and the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, DHEC, today announcing more than 1,300 new confirmed cases of coronavirus. Charleston County still leading the state with more than 10,000 reported infections. The total number of cases in South Carolina now stands at nearly 80,000. Nearly 700,000 tests have been conducted since the beginning of the pandemic. 79 more people across the state have died as a result of COVID-19. This brings the number of confirmed deaths in South Carolina to 1,412. A low country nurse making use of her time off and her photography skills to help out a community organization. News 2's Katie Augustine introduces us to Sarah Kossoff and talks about her feeding the heroes portraits. A click of Kasuf's camera turned into donated meals for healthcare workers on the front lines. It's part of a collaboration between the MUSC nurse and a local nonprofit, Feeding Our Heroes SC. Feeding Our Heroes SC brings in donations and provides free meals for health care workers in the area. Sarah Kasouf heard about the nonprofit and wanted to help by taking family portraits, something she's already been doing for years. Payment in the form of a donation to Feeding Our Heroes SC. 150 photos taken, around $5,000 raised. It hits close to home for Kasouf, who has worked at MUSC for eight years. Nurses and doctors and Techs and environmental people, everybody works so, I mean, just so hard, tireless. Nobody eats. I mean, so to have like halls or, you know, Rutledge Cab or Crave bring a really awesome meal in is like, that just lifts everybody's spirit. If you'd like to join the effort Feeding Our Heroes SC, you can find that information on our website, countonto.com. In downtown Charleston, I'm Katie Augustine, Count On Two. I just love to see that story, Meg, and people helping out our healthcare heroes. Time to check in with you to see a look at how the rest of the weekend is shaping up. Megan, I'm not surprised by today's temperatures. It was another hot one. Ho oh, Taylor, it was back into the 90s once again for the 17th day in a row, and that trend does look to continue for many more. Our whole 10 day outlook filled with even more 90s on the way and more chances for rain showers and thunderstorms. We've seen these scattered throughout the day. We're looking at mostly rain as of right now, but we still have one thunderstorm to point out that is rolling on through St. George. Still a possibility throughout the rest of the evening hours, but we do clear out overnight. But that rain chance, it does return very quickly tomorrow. A benefit of this rain is that it has cooled off a lot of our temperatures quite significantly. We're down to 82 in Mount Pleasant, 80 in Charleston, 74 in Monks Corner, 73 right now in St. George. That does not feel too bad considering that a lot of us were all the way up to 90 today. But those 90s are going to be continuing along with our storm chances as well. And then we're taking a look down at the tropics. Hurricane Hannah right off the coast of Texas. That's an interesting one to see. Our first hurricane of the Atlantic season. We'll be tracking that out here in about 10 minutes. Thanks, Megan. And hurricane season is here, so make sure you are prepared by downloading our Storm Team 2 Hurricane Guide. It has everything you need to know before, during, and after a hurricane. You can find it online at countonto.com. Plus, be sure to download our Storm Team 2 app for the latest updates. Thank you, merciful master, for the boy from Troy who was the conscience of Congress. 
A week-long celebration honoring the late congressman and civil rights icon John Lewis begins this weekend. Today, memorial services honoring Lewis taking place in Troy and Selma, Alabama. Daryl Forges has a closer look at the emotional farewells. Celebrating the life and legacy of the boy from Troy. On Saturday, the first of six days honoring the late Congressman John Lewis began. His birthplace, Troy, Alabama, paying tribute to the towering figure of the civil rights movement. Congressman Lewis has come home. At Troy University, family, friends, and the public set their final farewells. The auditorium only allowing a limited number of people inside to maintain safe social distancing measures. Lewis died last week at the age of 80 after a short battle with cancer. His last word was, how's the family doing? And I said, they're doing fine. He said, well, you make sure to tell them that I asked about him. Tributes taking place this week in five cities linked with key moments in the congressman's life, including Selma, Alabama, where a military honor guard will escort Lewis's body across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, the same bridge where Lewis helped lead a march for black voting rights in 1965 and was brutally beaten by Alabama state troopers, an event that came to be known as Bloody Sunday. In a time when going to jail was perceived as trouble, he reminded us that it was good Trevor, necessary as Trevor. The public will also get to pay their respects when he lies in the state of Montgomery, Washington, D.C., and Atlanta, Georgia, which Lewis represented in Congress for more than three decades. Congressman John Lewis was my uncle and my hero, and it's up to us to keep his legacy alive. I'm Daryl Forges reporting. A 33-mile walk today in the Low Country from Somerville to Mount Pleasant Memorial Waterfront Park, honoring veterans who have fallen victim to post-traumatic stress disorder. This is the sixth annual Walk for the Fallen, and the event was hosted by nonprofit organization Grappling PTSD. During the walk, the names of deceased veterans were read aloud and their service remembered. The founder says the organization's goal is to raise awareness on the importance of mental health stability for veterans and to provide resources. Uh, we pay for dental visits, uh, doctor's visits, um, and we take care of the families of uh, those that uh, have lost a service member, like counseling and stuff. So, um, you know, like I said, we take over with the VA, you know, let's, let's our veterans just kind of wash out a little bit. Today, more than 50 people participated in that march. Tomorrow is going to be another hot day out there across the low country, but we do have some relief in the way of scattered showers and thunderstorms. We'll be tracking those out as well as the week ahead for you. Coming up in your full Storm Team 2 forecast.